Good morning and welcome to WHIO Reports, a community service of News Center 7 and WHIO Radio. I'm Jim Otte on the program today. This time last year, we were all still scrabbling to deal with a growing health emergency as we were all reacting to the coronavirus crisis. One of the many places we saw a big impact was on our college and university campuses. We've come an awful long way since then. So this morning, we're talking with the region's top leaders in education about how they manage the way through this, how their institutions are doing today. We'll start with Wright State University. I had the chance to talk with their president, Susan Edwards, about the early days of the crisis, and yep, they had to act very quickly. So, Jim, it, it, you're absolutely right. It was it was pretty much instantaneously. Um, you know, a year ago, we were we received a phone call that we were being asked to shut down, and so we had to pivot very very quickly. And so, within three days, uh, we sort of worked with our, our centre of teaching learning, our faculty senate, and flipped uh, the classes that needed to be. Um, transferred to a remote format into into that format uh, and then it was communication we had to communicate to students we had to communicate to faculty we had to communicate to staff we had to communicate to the community around us and parents uh, and that all happened um, in a and, I, and I'll use the term a blur because it was it was just essentially all uh, hands on deck, making decisions, but also not making, just making decisions in a vacuum, also having to think about all the moving parts in making those decisions. And that was probably the biggest challenge. As you looked at all the different operating modes, how did you settle on one or two? How did that decision making process start and finish there? So it was basically a team effort. So we don't do anything in isolation, and especially when we're talking about classroom interaction, we have to engage the faculty in those conversations. So, you know, talking to them about, you know, what the options are and 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 who felt comfortable being in a in a face-to-face -face capacity and and those that didn't, but then also giving them the skill sets that were necessary to be a successful remote instructor. Um, and so that was a mammoth undertaking uh, because not everybody was in the same place. Uh, some folks were very comfortable with it and some folks were, were not very comfortable. So it was, there was a lot of, uh, we, we may have looked like a duck on top of the water, but the legs were going 100 miles an hour underneath. Um, and so, so it was just making sure that everybody felt comfortable as comfortable as they could be in an emergency situation, flipping to, to the mode that they had to flip to. We're talking right with Wright State University President, uh, Dr. Sue Edwards. Um, from a scientist's point of view, given your background in biology, I can see you just asking all those questions of those people advising you saying, I wanna hear about the science and all of this. That's what really drove your institution as well, because you have a lot of tough decisions that occasionally cost you money uh, to pivot in all of this. For you personally, what was this like? Um, it was an incredibly um, complicated and uh, challenging time. But at the same time, you know, as long as you kept the focus being the health and safety of our students, faculty and staff, you know, that was the primary focus of, of the entire process. And, and that, of course, can lead to frustration for folks that, you know, didn't really understand why we were having to make the decisions we were having to make. But, you know, we we're informed by, you know, the, the science and, and um, interim provost Lehman at the time is actually was actually a virologist, so that actually helped significantly. Um, and also the, the CDC and the state guidelines. So, you know, we really, there, there was some rules being formed. There was a rule book in terms of health and safety, and we just continued to follow that. Um, we made that decision right from the get-go that the health and safety of our, our family, our Wright State family, was the first and foremost um, priority. So what's it looking like right now, as we stand right now, for Wright State University? What mode are you uh, in currently? Currently, we, 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 we're currently in the same modes that we have been operating in. You know, I do see students outside my window every day as they're walking to classes. We do have um, classes that are happening on campus, lab classes, you know, um, 
studio classes, of course, our dancers. If you ever want to see something spectacular is coming and watching our dance classes happening with masks on, phenomenal. Um, but, you know, we, we continue to operate in that, in that remote setting. We are in the midst of planning for fall and the plans for fall, of course, just like the rest of the world, is, is trying to get back to what the new normal will be. Uh, we will still continue to have, um, you know, safety uh, protocols in place, but we'll have more classes that are face-to-face. -face. We'll have more, more engagement on campus. Student activities are returning to, to campus. Uh, you know, campus life will get back to... Um, to the, the, the new normal. Residence life will get back to the new normal. So I'm looking forward to that because the campus has been a very lonely place um, over the last 12 months. Madam President, so as you look forward, do you have a sense as to whether this has changed higher education, whether it's Wright State or anywhere else? Is this pandemic going to make the experience in higher education different in the future? I'm thinking of more hybrid learning, perhaps. Um, maybe my Monday, Wednesday, Friday class is not going to be all in person. Maybe Friday would be virtual. W what do you think about that? You know, I think um, higher education, whether whether we really acknowledge it or not, but I'm going to acknowledge it, higher education is changed as a result of the pandemic. Um, you know, I think it's taught us that we can do things in very different ways. Uh, I will tell you that our students have been incredibly resilient and have, um, have flipped into the new modes, but they don't like it. They don't like it. And it's just like you and I. You and I don't like not being able to be opposite each other in the studio right now. We're doing this via Zoom because we miss that human interaction. And I think really the, the thing that students relay to me the most is that they want to get back to that human interaction. That's an essential part, not only of their faculty and student relationship, but also the student to student peer relationship. And so I think that's always going to be there as part of the culture of higher education, but it has taught us that we can, as you say, do things in a hybrid mode. And, and that is something that I don't think we would have probably gotten as quickly to there as we have had to. Um, you know, it's higher education is is one of the last bastions of change, and and it's not something that is comfortable in higher ed, which is you know, which is fascinating in itself. But you know, I think it has actually taught us that we can do things differently, and it's okay. But we have to also be true to our values, our core values. And that is people. We're in the business of educating people and serving people. So we've got to get back to, to that. But I think there are lots of things that we've learned from this. And I we could go on for hours talking about all the things that I've certainly learned from it. President Edwards, we have just about a minute left in this portion of the program. I want to have you look a little bit further down the road as we start to come back to normal. You think this will be a gradual step, multiple steps, not just all in one. It's not going to be like a light switch and you'll say someday, hey, we're going back to 2019's mode. Uh, this is going to be a gradual change, don't you think, looking forward? Oh, I agree. I agree. I don't think there's, you know, I have a sign that sits behind me that says, don't look backwards. You're not going that way. So, um, you know, we have to be looking forward. We have to be positioning the university for the future and the future of the Miami Valley region. And, you know, that's what we we're currently in the process of doing. But we'll never go back to what it was in 2019. Um, those th th That boat has sailed. Um, it's now about what does the new, and I use the term, term new normal, you know, what does that look like moving forward? And at the moment, it's a little nebulous and people are uncomfortable with nebulous. Uh, I'm getting very comfortable with nebulous because it's kind of been where I've been living for the last 12 months. But I have a very, we have a very clear vision for how this institution remains a linchpin of the region uh, and, and continues to thrive. And so that's what we're planning for. Very good. Thanks for your time on the program this morning. The work you do in the Miami Valley. We'll check in at some point in the future, see how it works out. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Greatly appreciate it. Check the university's website for the latest on what's happening there on campus and their plans for the future.